I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm not a huge fan of Disney. Shut up. Like, <laughs> oh, all right, we got it. Hello, we are a podcast that doesn't have a name yet, and currently we are going to talk about why Josh doesn't like Disney. All right, so why don't you like Disney, Josh? Okay, no. Uh, yeah, not. <laughs> Before we started recording, my brother Josh came out with a very, very uh, crazy accusation where he says, I just want to let you guys know, I don't like Disney. So I'll just give it over to Josh. Yeah. No, no, okay. no, all right, he didn't say that. He, he said that. He doesn't like it as much as everybody else. Yeah, I said, it. okay, the quote was, I am not a huge fan of Disney. And it's not <laughs> that I don't like Disney. It's, I mean, I love Pixar and stuff, but, like, Snow White, I've seen one time. And I really couldn't really well, want it. Well, yeah, all yeah. right, like, anything old is... I'm, but I'm like, also... My father's going to hate me saying this because he watches TM, TCM, Turner yeah, Classic TCM. Movies, all the time. But it's not the same. Old movies just yeah, aren't the I same agree. quality as new movies. No, and I agree with that. But, like, everybody that I know, like, talks about these movies. They're classics. You need to see them. There's Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, any of the princesses. Basically, stuff like that. And Mulan, especially. I've never really been interested in that Okay, stuff. okay. But you can't group Mulan in the same Yeah, I don't know what as, you're talking about. Mulan is, like, Cinderella. We're talking about, like, 37 to 50s. The reason this was brought up was because I was talking about the eras of Disney and the different generations that have come out, and I brought up the first four, which is 1937 to 1970. Wait, 1937 they were making cartoons. Which one was the first one? Snow, Snow White, White was the first one. Snow White. Been, and yeah, 1937. Snow White is earlier than um, Sleeping Beauty? Oh, yeah. Sleeping yeah. Beauty, I didn't even get there yet because Josh cut me off. See, he <laughs> said that he doesn't like Disney movies, but when I start getting into the good ones, here is where Josh is going to say he likes them. Yeah. All right. So the Disney Renaissance. I'll pick up from here. This started in 1989 and goes through to 1999. The movies are The Little Mermaid, The Rescuers Down Under, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. Okay, Those wait. Those are no, all good movies. Yes. I will tell you which ones I have uh, actually seen multiple times because I've enjoyed them. Hercules. Hercules. Is great. Um, Beauty and the Beast. And Aladdin, I think. Aladdin's great. You Aladdin, seen Aladdin's Lion my King? favorite. Oh, no, Lion King. Lion King is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. But, but other than those four, I've like seen okay. maybe them once. I've never even seen Little Mermaid. Here we go. This is where Josh is really going to change his mind. Post-Renaissance, 2000 <laughs> to 2009. Wait, Fantasia wait, wait. wait. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before we go into this, I just want to say the goal of our podcast, because this is uh, maybe possibly our first episode is we want to talk mostly about like why movies are good or analyze themes, stuff like that, really go into analysis as opposed to summaries or reviews and, and just talking about movies. So hopefully once we get into this, we're going to talk about why we like these newer Disney movies as opposed to the older ones. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, go on with the list. So this is from 2000 to 2009. Fantasia 2000, Dinosaur. The Emperor's New Groove. Dinosaur. Oh, that's <laughs> a classic. It is a classic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Atlantis, The Lost Empire, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet. Oh, that is... Brother that is, Wait, wait, I'm just going to stop you right there. Treasure Planet is my all-time favorite Disney movie. Exactly. Brother Wait, Bear. hold up. But it got box office crap. All like, of these post-Renaissance, I wanted to bring this up. My mother is currently calling me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. All right, so we're going to continue. So Treasure Planet... Brother Bear, Home on the Range, which I didn't really see. I, but yeah, I have no idea what that I've is. I've never even heard of that I've movie. It's the one with the three cows, and they're like... Oh my god, yeah, that's outrageous. Back at the barnyard. Yeah, no, shut up. <laughs> Racing Stripes. <Chicken laughs> Little. Frankie Muniz. Chicken Little. Ready for this? <laughs> Wait, Frankie yeah, Muniz Frankie was Muniz Racing was Stripe? The, no, he wasn't. The Racing Stripe? No, he wasn't. <laughs> yes, he my was. My brother is currently lying to us uh, right now. Look it up, Matthew. <laughs> wait, wait, so the zebra. <laughs> this is outrageous. Right. The zebra. Yes, he was the zebra. He okay. was racing stripe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, Chicken Little. <laughs> Chicken Little. Meet the Robinson. Oh, boy! And Bolt, which Bolt was only okay. But out of all of these, so many of those were great movies. And then after that, you've got the revival era, which is 2010 to present, and that is Princess and the Frog, Tangled, the new Winnie the Pooh, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, and Big Hero 6. And Moana, now. Moana's great. Okay, Moana well, was great. So, a lot of these movies you like. I just think you we brought up the old ones first, and that's where you were kind of like, I don't remember any of these, so they can't be good. Well, okay, hold on. It's not that I don't remember them, because like, I remember a lot of these. They're just not, they're not as good. I mean, I'm just not a huge fan of, like, 
musicals in yeah, yeah, general yeah. when half of the movie is just based around music that doesn't even like make sense with the plot like, I, I think that there's also a difference of newer musicals or newer disney when when you have songs in it not even like newer but you know from the 90s onwards mm-hmm. or from the 80s onwards the music that they do there yeah. is a lot more personal and a lot and it was also a lot more modern in the last ones it was kind of opera y they would have yeah like, peter pan had like 15 minute opening credits with that opera singing i'm not sure <laughs> if you guys remember the old disney movie, i i don't i i cannot remember that it, opening yeah, scene. it was no, it was the opening credits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and the opening have, credits. I don't remember. Like, singing mm. going on with it. Right, yeah. That was kind of boring. But. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It's also more personal, I feel. Yeah. When you go back to the older ones, the Seven Dwarves, they talk about work. They yeah. have a whole song about, like, we're going to the mines, haha, <laughs> whatever. And that's just not... Yeah, that's, and well... And I never, it's not relatable. Yeah. Well, it, it might, it may have been relatable to like coal miners back, back in the then. in the 30s and 40s, but it but wasn't relatable to the normal people and now. children, especially yeah. children. Yeah. It is guess, geared towards whoa, children. Gosh, you are totally guessing their demographic. Here. <laughs> you do not know that they're going for children. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. The thing for me is just like I, if you have like this woman who's just like cleaning her house, and all of a sudden she starts singing with a bunch of birds. It, there's no purpose. Well, it's archaic. Yeah. It, it's it's old fashioned also, and and that's what that's what I'm talking about. The older movies don't click well with us because we don't have a frame of reference for like let's be happy about being a woman and cleaning a house. Yeah, like it's very it's very also sexist for now times, but back then it was a norm for just women to stay at home and clean all day, and so she sings a song about it. Nowadays people have a lot more trouble with this is going to get kind of deep finding their place in the world and so and it's okay to talk about that more openly and so you have hercules singing a song about i'm going to find a place where i belong yeah and back then it's like you know what your place is if you're a man you gotta work if you're a woman you gotta you gotta clean your house for your family yeah, yeah, I also think that just back then the stories were so centered around the romance, and it's yes, like those movies are good for that. And I mean, like I am a sucker for like a good romance movie, but like they didn't have any other sort of themes or plot devices that were I- interesting. Mm-hmm. It's just boy meets girl, they That's fall true. in love. Like, Sleeping Beauty was very boring. Yeah, because it's just that for things in the newer stuff i mean tangled there's tangled so much else so going fun. on oh yeah it's not tangled just a romance such a fun movie. movie and frozen i mean yeah there's the romance part in it but like it's really it takes a back sisters. seat yeah yeah, yeah. It's centered around yeah. The, uh, I, the, uh, that's, yeah i gotta say that's very true a lot of it turns from that boring more mellow romance into like a lot more action bigger stuff but yeah i feel like that's just movies in general they yeah got. but i also think they they took it to a different place with the relationship with the sisters. Instead of it being like the relationship has to be a boy and girl and they fall in love, mm-hmm. well, we're opening it up to how do sisters, uh, their relationship work. And, this um, is just Frozen, right? Yeah, it's just right. Frozen. And then also in <laughs> Moana, tell me if I'm no wrong. No romance. No romance at all, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no romance. Which I think beautiful. is amazing. Beautiful. Really uh, good idea. So one of the things that we get bothered about uh, i don't want to generalize but one of the things i get bothered Uh, about in movies is there has to be a romance in every single movie needless it's just right and the problem is is that like wonder woman (laughs) (laughs) well we're not gonna go into that right now (laughs) people are gonna stop listening to our podcast the minute we start dissing wonder woman but but whatever whatever (laughs) but it's not gonna be too much of a big deal to have romance subplots for just a normal <laughs> movie goer. Yeah, but the, I agree. But the three of us watch so much TV and watch so many movies that once you see romance put into every single thing, it just gets boring. It gets mm. tried, you know? Yeah. And I think they use it kind of as a crutch, too. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like, this movie's not going to sell unless it has a, a boy meets girl love story. Why? Like, it's not a necessary thing. Right, and I think that that's why newer disney we like it better and when when you started listing these older movies and josh started going oh like i don't like disney that much that's why because the newer movies they don't talk so much about the romance it Mm -hmm. it takes either more of a side subplot or even like um well uh you know i i completely agree with you like for instance lilo and stitch yeah had nothing um that oh 
I mean, no romance, but the family aspect of that. That's what I mean. Makes you want to cry. Like <laughs> it, it, it delves into these relationships that are not just boy-girl mm-hmm. romance. It's between family. It's between friends. It's between sisters. It's, there's so many other things that I think are important to mm-hmm. delve into, but they always bring it back to romance in the end in a lot of different uh, media these days, which is really annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because it takes away from the other things that we're trying to focus on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's a great point because. Disney is geared, well, current Disney is geared towards younger audiences yeah. most of the time, or at least a family audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it's important to teach kids things when you're doing a child video or a family video. You want to be able to teach kids some sort of lesson, not just about, oh, romance is good, yeah. whatever. And so when they do romance, it kind of takes away from the lesson that they could be teaching and the rest of the plot as well. Yeah, um, definitely. I think we should talk about how, why some of these Disney movies were so overlooked. When I was naming the post-Renaissance, we know these movies well, but <laughs> a lot of other people don't know these movies, and they kind of tanked in box office. And yeah. it's upsetting, because some of them are some of the greatest movies, yeah. in my opinion. So, um, the Renaissance era, like I said, it had movies like Aladdin and Lion King and Beauty and the Beast, so these movies that did really, really well in the box office, and they were all musicals and they were all these like really nice and they're considered classics yeah Yeah, well well for us you know only 90 kids remember but like yeah (laughs) you know um but like that's what 90s kids consider classics right now yeah but like even like kids now like they've all seen lion king Mm -hmm. and beauty and the beast oh yeah yeah and then after that era it goes into movies like dinosaur atlantis um Treasure Planet, Lilo and Stitch, all of these movies, I feel like that was a sharp turn for Disney. Yeah. There was that musical aspect and it kind of uh, got dropped a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For they more modern the sound. Musical and yeah. they went for some of these they kind of went like really action heavy, at least I think. I just watched Atlantis. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you watched it for the first time, right? I watched Atlantis for the first I watched, time. I've only seen the first half of Atlantis, but it's okay to talk about. Yeah, it. very action heavy um and uh, Treasure Planet. I like know. I said, one of my favorite okay. movies of all time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. By Disney. I, and I do want to talk about that for a little bit because I think that that had one of the more profound messages, uh, or or at least characters. I thought the main character in that, what was his name? Jack. Jimbo. Jimbo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He he was he was an amazing character, and I think maybe one of Disney's first for a child of not only a divorce. I think it was divorce, right? Uh, uh, dead, dead, maybe. I think dead dad. Okay, well, the dad wasn't in the picture. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. But think the mother really was, and and he was like a troubled kid. Oh like, yeah, yeah. At the like, very first scene, well, the second scene, yeah. is him being pulled over by cops for like skating in unauthorized yeah. territory. Right, and I don't want to. I don't want to say, oh, you know, it's okay to break the law, but I, I think it's really important for Disney to show, yeah, not even just kids, but also troubled teenagers who may just begrudgingly be going to the movies with their parents or whatever and saying these types of people can change and the kids themselves to say you can heal because he was very much a hurting broken character yes and not only that but the cyborg throughout the movie is one of i think <laughs> the best redemption stories i've ever seen in, in oh like you mean disney, you mean the, the father movie. figure yeah he's a he's a cyborg mm-hmm. yeah. he has um the robot eye leg yeah, and yeah arm. that's right mm-hmm. and the thing about him is throughout the whole movie he's the father figure of the um of the main character jimbo and about halfway in three quarters in you find out that he's the bad guy mm-hmm. then you're kind of like upset because it's like he was this father figure he was supposed to be the good guy and he turns out to be the bad guy and then at the end of the movie, he had grown this strong bond with Jimbo, and it comes down to the money, which he was so greedy for, mm-hmm. and Jimbo. And he chooses Jimbo, and at the end of the movie, he is spared any um, rides off into the sunset by himself mm-hmm. without getting arrested or anything, which kind of shows in the end, he still made the right decision. Like yeah. he, he chose to stay with Jimbo and save his life and risk mm-hmm. all the... And I think that this is actually cool because what I'm trying to figure out right now is that in the Renaissance era with all these musicals, the good guys were always, you could see that they were like good hearted, good, these good hearted people and you knew that they were the good guys from the very beginning. But then in the post Renaissance, you have this kid from Treasure Planet you, um, in Emperor's New Groove. It's oh, yeah, the good yeah, guy a jerk. is this Once terrible, again. terrible emperor who like 
is a jerk to everyone, yeah. and then you see him chain throughout the thing. Yeah, it's yeah. actually really cool. Stitch, Stitch is a terrible. He's alien an alien at the beginning. Yeah, right? that's a and really good point. So like that. Yeah, I really all, like, like that point. They were really brother flat bear. Before. It's this guy who was hunting all the bears and stuff, and then he's like, wait a minute, I'm destroying these bears' family. It's, yeah. They're actually showing a lot of change in these post-Renaissance things, and that's actually something that's really cool. Yeah, the mm-hmm. character development really took a step up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That it, era. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They become way more round characters. Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that was a good point, Josh. Yeah, they were like pretty flat beforehand. It was like good versus bad. No struggle to see yeah, like who, yeah. who's in the right. I think that the idea of having flat characters transition into more fallible, flawed characters also reflects literature and how that was made. Back in the day, uh, college class, liberal arts, whatever. <laughs> but um, back when um, you know, Europe was still a very religious-based society, we had a lot of literature that was based in the hero's tale. You wanted to have your main character be as perfect as you could possibly be. That way it would be a role model for whoever was reading, for kids in particular, mm. or for you know us heathens that sin and whatever. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as time went on, people started to, and, and this was like hundreds of years, putting in characters that were more relatable to say, you know, it's okay to mess up, as long as you try and fix yourself later. Yeah, yeah and, definitely. And it went from a character conquering through his perfection to a character that was the second act is where you fail, the third act is where you either redeem yourself, or if it's a tragedy, you lose whatever you had in the first act. And I think that, especially Disney movies, that's like a little microcosm of that. You have the infallible Prince Charming that you see in the various iterations in the old movies that do nothing wrong mm-hmm. and prevail through their perfection and then once you get to like the 90s or 2000s you have the more characters that fail in order to show relatability to children or even adults yeah that's actually really cool so another movie that i remember was being on that list was the movie dinosaur which i know for a fact that we have on vhs yeah we do we absolutely do we absolutely do i don't know if I have much to say about it. I haven't seen that in yeah. probably like 10 years. <laughs> I haven't years, seen though. that movie in years, but <laughs> the one thing I remember is it starts out with the egg rolling away oh. from like... Oh my god, yeah, is. that's right. A pterodactyl comes down and takes one and drops it, and then like the monkeys catch it or something. It was really weird. Oh yeah, that was bizarre. Yeah, uh, just one thing I really liked about it was Disney totally took a turn from their normal animation. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, and definitely. that was that, I, was, that was like pre Pixar, right? Oh yeah. No, 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 no that, that was after, after, but it Pixar, wasn't but involved with Pixar. Yeah, it wasn't involved, which is something different. Pixar was actually started by um the idea of Apple, uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, That's a fun yeah. fact for you. They um they partnered with Disney. The animation styles are completely different, and it looks a little bit more like a Pixar type feel, but even more realistic than that. They really um instead of making it so cartoony like Lilo and Stitch or like even the older stuff like Lion King, it's very realistic looking. I mean, it's still a cartoon, uh, and you can tell it's animated, but. I just think that's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they haven't really done anything else in that sort of vein yeah, of animation. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think, not right? a realistic way. You're yeah, definitely that's... right about trying to go for a more realistic feel, but they still had kind of the animated-y Frozen wasn't Pixar and Bolt with, yeah, Bolt, I was with gonna Hannah Montana. But was... these kind of look more like Pixar. Also, yeah, 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 definitely. I'm kind of upset here because the list that I'm reading off of for all these movies totally left out the Planes movies. Which oh my god. It was not Pixar and No, was that not DreamWorks? No, because it was an offshoot of Cars, right? Yeah, it's yeah. an offshoot of Cars, which first of all is kind of ridiculous cuz Cars was Pixar and this one was just Disney. So that mm-hmm. was kind of weird. Yeah. But then I heard that they didn't do so well anyway in the box office. Oh, Andrew no, I saw I saw Collins. Planes Fire, Fire, and, Fire, and, Rescue. Fire and Rescue. Yeah. I did not pay attention to it whatsoever. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep because Ooh. it was it was in a it was in a driving, driving. driving. Yeah, so it was like the third movie you saw, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, the thing with those movies is just that it's for the money. They saw cars did well and they're like, "Okay, these kids are going to want to see something like it with these planes that can talk and interact." And so they were just, "Yeah, we're going to go with that." One thing I did notice was that at the end of the post Renaissance era around Treasure Planet, I think, Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, Bolt, 
these were in more three D animation from the Aladdin mm-hmm. and from the Emperor's New Groove. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And then in the next era, the revival era, that has Big Hero Six, Frozen, Wreck It Ralph, Tangled. All of these have really three D. Yeah, that's that's actually a really animation. good point. Yeah, we don't really have that many cartoony movies anymore. Yeah, coming from definitely. Disney. Definitely, at least not from yeah. Disney. And from mm-hmm. most animation studios, I yeah, think like even like DreamWorks animation is getting pretty good. Yeah, animation like is kind of the new. I'm kind of sad about that because there's something about just pen and paper yeah. cartoons. There's something there, and you can Japan's do a lot doing with it, it. Right? I, I gotta yeah, say, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. Anyway, and I think that this could probably be because Pixar was doing 3D movies, and then after they saw how well this was doing, yeah, uh, yeah. like it, after they had a couple of years of that, they were like, hey, maybe we could take this. But I do right. want to say, well, yeah, wait, and I, and I would, and I, I think that there was, like you said, Josh, the a lot of the 2D movies, the cartoon movies that Disney was putting out at the time, they weren't doing well like at all. But then. All of the Pixar movies still had a pretty good box yeah, office definitely. Like, ever since their founding. Yeah. Well, so. a- another thing about Pixar is they take a long time to put out a movie. They're not putting mm-hmm. out a movie like every mm-hmm. like six months, every couple months. It's, they put real time and effort, mm-hmm. and effort into it, mostly because um, I think they might have less people working on it. So I think that that leads to a better box office. But also, I think that's just the 3D animation style is just like how animation has progressed. Mm-hmm. People, a lot of times in the industry, I feel... Um, might be like, well, that's kind of backtracking. If we go yeah, back into true. this 2D style, this cartoony style, that's backtracking to what we've already yeah, done. We've already right, done. yeah. Um, and we I, can go further. I do have to say, Big Hero 6, I read an article online about how Disney got their own like animation program or something. In There's like a sunset scene where like, the sky is like pink in that movie, and it is beautiful. And Moana too. There were so many scenes in oh, that yeah, where definitely. Disney like did something. Yeah, the where waves they got their in Moana are, are crisp and beautiful. They, it's ridiculous. They don't look repeated they got these or pre-rendered. It's are, crazy. You don't see anywhere else, and mm-hmm. that's I think Disney really got that right. I'm yeah. not sure if uh, it leaked out to other companies or mm-hmm. yet, but I did read that Disney had that as its own when Big right. Hero Six came out. Yeah, and I definitely heard this was big in the news at the time, but Frozen had this giant new software thing yeah that yeah. might have been the start of it i'm not sure mm-hmm. check me on that but frozen had the individual snowflakes and like the snowflakes yeah. caught in the hair and dress yeah. and stuff they had some crazy powerful engine that was able to put all of that onto screen at the same time mm-hmm. okay that's all the time we have left in this episode but keep checking back on our channel hopefully we'll post about two things every week and we might talk about this stuff in a later episode so Check on back. <laughs> <laughs> Checkity check check back. <laughs> Checkity check check check. Keep on checking. Hey, that was the Justin Royal thing. <laughs> yeah. Checkity check check chicken. <laughs> All right. Uh, see you guys later. Bye. 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 Um. <laughs> <laughs>